welcome to aatcm the emergency medicine channel today we have received a 68 year old female with complaints of breathing difficulty to emergency from another hospitals yes, so on primary assessment patient was uh, talking in one full sentence so, uh, and 10 it, second assessment initial 10 second assessment mm-hmm. patient was talking in a full sentence uh, on oxygen support Mm-hmm. and looking uh, normal color not paler when you say oxygen support you need to mention how much liters my oxygen okay. support Because of 4 liters 15 liters of yes. oxygen 4 yeah. liter oxygen face mask was connected to the patient okay. so we have taken her into the red area and we started the initial primary assessment on primary assessment airway patient was talking in one full sentence there are no any added uh, breath sounds any strider any sounds and no any pulling of secretions next coming to the breathing patient was having saturation of 95% at 4 liter of oxygen on face mask and respiratory rate was 30 per minute on uh, inspection the chest raise the left side there is a clear chest raise but right side there is no clear chest raise mm-hmm. on auscultation right side air entry was lo- low mm-hmm. so at this point to in- any added breath sounds no added breath sounds normal vascular breath sound on the left side itself okay. so at this point of time uh, we asked for a portable x-ray mm. and we continued uh, as the patient was having the proper uh, saturation we continued with the next uh, any other uh, adjoins to primary survey you want to do right now we want to do an ultrasound screening uh, ultrasound yes. we can do ultrasound screen because anyhow the patient's portable x-ray will take its own time to present right so we can plan for a ultrasound of chest as soon as our primary survey ends. we don't have to stop but primary survey we can continue then we can go for a ultrasound okay. chest anything else patient is having hypoxia for it oxygen 95 saturation we can ask for a arterial blood arterial cast, right? yeah so arterial blood cast to assess how much of hypoxia whether it's type 1 or type 2 uh, involvement is there we can look for with a arterial blood cast fine then next we came to the circulation component in that pulse rate was 88 per minute mm. bp is 130 by 80 mm. all peripheral pulses are palpable mm. and at this point uh, we put in the iv cannula and we sent for the labs and the abg was drawn at this point okay next disability wise patient uh, was had this patient if this patient had a bp of 80 50 yes sir what else will you check in circulation we have to check for any dilated neck veins yeah you should have checked for dilated Dilated neck neck veins uh, in that condition but since bp is quite normal and there is no tachycardia you didn't check for it but it's okay next disability patient was having full gcs of e4 v5 m6 people were reactive bilaterally and uh, coming to the exposure part uh, patient uh, zrbs was 130 mg per dl and the patient was not efebrile so we have come we completed the primary survey and we found that the patient was having a respiratory difficulty mm. with right sided reduced air entry yeah. so uh, at by this point of time we have the abg ready okay. in the initial abg with the support of the oxygen which was withdrawn uh, pc P, uh, the patient had no any acid base disorders with uh, uh, po2 of 72.6 which is no no any high what is is low but low, it's but not type 1 failure, failure but this is with 4 liter of oxygen, oxygen so we have to expect the po2 to, to be quite, quite low, low. Mm. Uh, and uh, now we proceeded with the uh, ultrasound screening ultrasound so this patient didn't have any acid base disorder. disorder because of ph is being normal no. but patient is having tachypnea respiratory rate is quite high desaturation is there 80 year old do you want to check any other uh, abg mm. value you want to see if there is any metabolic acidosis ah, what type of metabolic acidosis high end Uh, you can expect a lactic acidosis in this patient right at least due to the increased work of breathing you can expect a lactic acidosis which is most probably reversible unless there is a joint hypotension a uh, work of breathing induced lactic acidosis can easily be reverted once we symptomatically treat the pathology okay but lactic acidosis is something that we can we have to look into we, it may not be there but we have to look into fine bicarb was 27 and even lactic was 1.0 Uh, next step uh, we went with the screening ultrasound and screening ultrasound uh, the 
we scanned the right side and the left side of the chest. On the right side, in the apical area, the lung sliding was absent. Okay. Whereas in the left side, there is a lung sliding present. And when okay. we ch and when we checked for the M mode, uh, there was a uh, uh, there was a stratosphere sign on the right side, and the left side it was shishore sign. No, right side it was showing stratosphere barcode sign. No, barcode sign was there, stratosphere sign was there, and the left side we got the seashore sign. Fine. So, uh, so you are saying that the patient is most probably having uh, pneumothorax. pneumothorax. Is pneumothorax the only condition in which uh, lung sliding will be absent? Lung sliding absent. Why do you think lung sliding is absent in pneumothorax? Because there is no uh, space for the lung. Cannot. Yes, there is air between two layers of pleura. Since two layers of pleura is not adjoint to one another because there is something occupying the space, there is no sliding action. Mm -hmm. This is the reason, right? So, is air the only thing that can cause lung sliding absent? Any mass, intrapleural mass effusion. Mass can be, but plural effusion. effusion. So, plural effusions can also can cause decreasing lung sliding. Okay. Now, you told lung sliding is absent. We have got a barcode sign or stratosphere sign uh, in right. M mode. These are very uh, sensitive signs for uh, no. pneumothorax. Uh, that is true. Given no other pathology is there, pneumothorax should be suspected. What is a specific sign? On the ultrasound. What is a specific sign for pneumothorax in ultrasound? Absence of no, those are absence of lung sliding, barcode sign, everything is more sensitive. Okay. So, we have difference in sensitivity and specificity, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So, sensitive is much more, we are tuned to it, but it may not be. It can be falsely positive. Mm -hmm. But lung point, lung point is something which is much more specific towards pneumothorax. So, what is lung point? Lung point is demonstrated in ultrasound when you can see a point in uh, lung ultrasound in which one part of the pleura is having sliding while the in the same window the other part is not having sliding. So that is a meeting point between the two uh, layers of pleura and that would be the point in which pneumothorax ends. So lung point is much more specific for pneumothorax. I'm not saying the other things are not pneumothorax wise. They, they should sensitize you, but this is more specific. Okay, what else? Uh, at this point, uh, depending upon the requirement, should, uh, we should consider whether we have to put an ICD requirement mm -hmm. or not to intervene in the primary survey. As the patient is a patient is symptomatic, we and we have to check but for. But in the meantime, when, uh, that is true. But along with this, you are done. Your lung sliding is absent. Your stratosphere sign is positive. You should do the entire blue protocol to identify whether it is only pneumothorax mm -hmm. or is there a underlying lung pathology that is causing effusion. Mm -hmm. For example, this patient is having multiple A lines. Multiple A lines is there. It can be effusion, yes. and you can do a. Um, abdominal probe you can check whether there is pleural effusion in the uh, costophrenic regions right so if that is ruled out then you can say it is pneumothorax yes. and you can plan for icd insertion and all. but without that with just lung sliding if you go ahead with the pneumothorax you may miss a concurrent infection or a concurrent effusion okay after the thorough, like I am doing an ultrasound of the lung, as per the blue protocol, there were no other findings other than the pneumothorax, suspicious of pneumothorax in the right upper lobe. Okay. After that, uh, following the clinical uh, pathway of the uh, British Thoracic Society, BDS. Once, BDS. Once if the patient is uh, uh, symptomatic, we check if there are any high risk characteristics. The high risk characteristics are if the patient is hemodynamically unstable, yes. which is suggestive of tension pneumothorax, or if there is significant hypoxia, mm. or if there is bilateral pneumothorax and age is greater than 50 years, then we need to consider it as high risk characteristic and we should 
see if the size of the pneumothorax is required to intervene or not. Mm -hmm. In this case, the patient is a high risk female, high age female, but there were no any other high risk characteristics. So, uh, it wasn't required to intervene. At that time, we need to check the size of the pneumothorax. Size of the pneumothorax is calculated at the, as per British guidelines at the hilum level. If it is uh, laterally 2 mm, more than 2 mm or 3 mm in the at the hilum level, if there is pneumothorax, it is suggested that the volume is greater than 50 percent. So, in this patient, uh, we require an x ray. After the x ray, only we can make this. As the patient is have not having significant character. Since the patient is not in hypotension or in <coughs> severe hypoxia, uh, we no need to go for it with oxygen. We can investigate the patient and plan for a. ICD insertion. There is no emergency ICD insertion in here. Yes. So, uh, as per the guideline, we need to, after the x-ray was taken, uh, at the hilum level, if there was more than 2 mm, at uh, the lateral side, there was pneumo uh, finding more, more than, than 2 mm? Yes, sir. More than 2 centimeters, sorry. More than 2 centimeters. More than 2 centimeters. Two millimeters two, is yes, quite small, right? So more, more than, than 2, two centimeters at hilum level, more than 50 percent of, of lung volume is New collapsed, collapsed is what we are saying. So here the patients, uh, yeah, when the chest X-ray was taken, in the right side at the hilum level, it was around four centimeter of uh, window of the pneumothorax was there. So after uh, ascertaining the size, we need to check where what is the priority of the patient. If the if the patient doesn't want the procedure or if they want rapid uh, relief and patient wants to be ambulatory or if there is rapid relief but only short term drainage we have to select in this patient. And if there is a, uh, uh, this, uh, depending on, uh, for this patient in our case scenario, we went with the HRCT thorax initially because the patient has been deferred from outside hospital. Now coming to the secondary uh, survey, patient is a uh, 80 year old female who is a known case of systemic hypertension, dyslipidemia and hypothyroidism. Uh, this patient uh, has a chronic back pain uh, like see, uh, one year ago who has been evaluated as uh, having vertebral mets or uh, vertebral mets. In a PET scan there was having D2 to D12 uh, lytic areas were present. Okay. So in this background uh, the patient had lost for follow up. She was not evaluated further and three days uh, like ago, she had visited to a local hospital with complaints of uh, shortness of breath and uh, fever for two days. Okay. So uh, for this, the outside hospital had taken an x-ray and they had uh, like misdiagnosed as LRT and they started with antibiotics. But irrespective of the two days duration in the hospital, patient was on the minimal four litre oxygen requirement, but it wasn't worsening. As it wasn't getting better, the patient was referred to our hospital. Okay. So, uh, right now after getting the HRCT thorax we had done, the initial finding of the HRCT thorax was right-sided pneumothorax with middle and upper lobe collapse. Okay. So, this patient, uh, because of the huge volume of the both upper lobe and middle lobe collapse, decision of putting an ICD was taken. Okay. This patient, See, already this patient was seen in ER. Yes, we diagnosed the patient to have hypoxia, respiratory, mild respiratory uh, distress, right? Yes, uh, respiratory rate of 30, 30, 30. So, mild respiratory distress, mild hypoxia, no type 1 failure, but we are diagnosed to have pneumothorax. Yes. So, taking an x ray is a logical step because there is no tension pneumothorax, there is no hypotension, there is no um, collapsing or um, emergency features, we went with the X-ray for confirmation. That's a good decision. So, X-ray showed clear-cut pneumothorax and uh, we have got around 4 cm of uh, lung collapse, lung, lung margin is visible. So, it's a no doubt it's a pneumothorax. Now, we went ahead with HRCT chest. Now, HRCT chest taking is not the issue. This patient is stable enough to uh, do the investigation because already four days outside the hospital they have treated. They are giving four liter oxygen. Pneumothorax is not at all worsening. So we know that it's a closed pneumothorax. The lung injury that has caused the pneumothorax is already closed. There's no one way valve entered. If there was a one way valve, the patient would have worsened, worsened and become a tension pneumothorax by this time. So it is not like that. So uh, this is a simple pneumothorax. So going for HRCT is not going to worsen the patient condition, but it's an unnecessary risk. Now the question is whether to take the risk or not. 
now that risk can be um, explained or it can be taken up if we get some diagnostic uh, better uh, diagnostic details so in what if we want to rule out what condition this hrct would have helped us suppose if there has been a bullet rather yes, than yes if the this was a copd mm -hmm. patient previous history of copd patient hrct uh, just for this patient not every patient this patient is acceptable risk because if it was a huge bullet on the lateral aspect of lung uh, or if there is multiple bullet along the Uh, lateral aspect of lung with chest wall when we insert the icd itself we can rupture one and we can rule out a bullet as been seen as a, a pneumothorax like condition so to rule that out we can or else the patient has previous tb histories has multiple adhesions or carcinomas already a suspected carcinoma is a with the lighting lesions whether leg mets is causing multiple uh, band like formation within the pleural cavity those details taking hrct is yes. a acceptable risk uh, but otherwise to know about the lung if we want to know how the lung is or any mass is there inside the lung is it better to take hrct after the icd insertion or before the icd insertion after the icd after because then only lung will expand once the lung expands you can see better right visibility increases penetration increases the radiologist will be able to give you a much better answer rather than be before the icd insertion okay so any anyway, we are taken the ct we have got the reports uh, it's a tension it's a pneumothorax and icd it's insertion was not can you explain the icd it's insertion as per the bts guidelines uh, the step by approach uh, indications of the chest drain insertion would be in case of pneumothorax if the patient is already in a ventilator at the time of chest drain positive pressure ventilation it's not ventilator it's positive pressure ventilation. even if it is in cpap or in iv we have to put icd or else you are pushing in air mm -hmm. Uh, pneumothorax in an ventilated patient, or if the tension pneumothorax after the initial needle aspiration, next we have to put an ICD insertion. Needle relief, needle aspiration. Ah. Uh. After we release by it, if it is re required again, we can put an ICD. Mm. Or if there is a large secondary spontaneous pneumothorax in patients over 50 years, mm. ICD drain insertion is required. Or if the patient is having malignant pleural effusion, mm. if there is empyema or mm. traumatic hemopneumothorax. Mm -hmm. or if it's a post operative like thoracotomy cardiac surgeries cvt surgeries in that cases icd train insertion is the indications whenever there is a volume loss to the lung which is affecting patient's normal respiration we should plan for icd insertion if it is not self resolving so any condition that is not self resolving causes significant respiratory depression for the patient you should Put ICD ICD. insertion. So the different criteria you have mentioned, no, it's all comes under this thing only. So what is it's um, excluded in that? You have told multiple things. What is excluded? The only exclusion there is simple pneumothoraces. That is size less than two centimeters. Simple pneumothoraces, which can be either needle aspirated or spontaneous res resolution with the hyper uh, high oxygen therapy can be done. Or any pleural effusion that is caused by reversible infections that also only aspirations are required no icd is required all other conditions what they are saying is non resolving conditions so we have to resolve it icd is uh, next comes to the pre drainage risk assessment before putting the icd drain we need to calculate the risk of hemorrhage as in any procedure to calculate the get the ptin or aptt and the clotting factors other than that uh, in the pre risk pre drainage risk assessment we need to have the differential diagnosis between pneumothorax and bullous disease between collapse of the lung and the effusion yes these type of things on x ray if it is not clear we can go with the better imaging techniques and if there is any uh, ad adhesions in the chest wall they also has to be expected like a pre drainage assessment and uh, post uh, pneumectomy the if there is any drainage of the post pneumectomy space after cutting it should be consulted with the cvts people before putting an icd insertion all this thing is only valid for a planned <coughs> icd, ICD insertion. insertion 
a patient presented to emergency department with acute respiratory distress and pneumothorax should be treated first with ICD insertion. This patient, we are discussing all this because it's a four-day history. So that when we discuss these things, that should be highlighted. When a planned ICD insertion is done, we should think about all these things. Fine, but when the acute presentation comes, mm. only thing we have to keep in mind is English bleeding risk. That should be kept in mind. You should specifically look for anticoagulants or antiplatelets. And if it is present, we have to explain to the bystander that there is a possibility of local bleeding as well as intrapleural bleeding. That should be explained. But all other conditions are planned procedures. And uh, if the patient is on like anticoagulant, just like warfarin, if it is an elective procedure, we can just stop it and wait for its action but to reduce. We are discussing emergencies. Yeah, emergencies. Let's go with that. Thanks. So uh, after the in uh, searching, taking in the consent of the patient, we start with the pre-medication. Yes. Pre-medication involves giving a local anesthetic and local opioid as a painkiller management can be given. Okay. Uh, IM opioid can be used one hour prior to the insertion if it's an elective. Or at this point of time, we can start with uh, anesthesia, local anesthesia itself. Okay. Uh, local anesthesia we give with uh, mid like uh, lignocaine as the local anesthetic of choice. Okay. And patient, next comes the patient position. Okay, fine. So, since we are in emergency department and one of the causes, uh, one of the conditions in which you insert ICD is traumatic uh, pneumohemothorax, uh, right? Pneumohemo, yeah, pneumothorax or hemothorax, traumatic. Look, let's discuss about that patient. So, you, as you told, uh, we can give uh, local anesthesia with lignocaine. Uh, lignocaine with adrenaline, we can easily give. That is most universal mm -hmm. drug. Universal drug of choice is that, no doubt. And it's effective too, given properly and given time for it to act, it is effective too. Otherwise, we can supplement the patient with uh, IM opioids or even IV, small dose of IV uh, opioids we can give for the patient for pain relief. That's also correct. But Think of a traumatic patient, patient who was in a road traffic accident, bike versus something, uh, having multiple injuries, multiple operations, presenting with uh, pneumothorax, you are going to put ICD, there is no time, and you can't waste time also, because you don't know whether it will worsen to attention pneumothorax, right, so you are going to put ICD. What do you think is bet be better, uh, like you nocaine know, uh, with IV opioids or something else? With IV analgesics and... IV analgesics IV analgesics would reduce oh, that is opioids. Basically, IV opioids is IV analgesics, yes. right? Opioid yes. is analgesic. Anything else? Or if it is a child, maybe like Inhalation. 10, 12 years old child is presenting with a traumatic pneumothorax. Anesthetic agents can be. Procedures are addition. Procedures are addition. Procedures are addition. You can give procedures are addition. Given the patient doesn't have any brain injury, uh, procedure suggestion should be given. It's not like uh, a brain injury is there, you should not give procedure suggestion. One of the best drugs to give in such a condition is ketamine. Ket Since it is ketamine, I told make sure patient doesn't have brain injury, but procedure suggestion is a very good mechanism in which we can do the procedure without uh, any interference from the patient and patient will also be uh, sedated. Not really sedated. Uh, Relief from the pain. Yeah. Okay with our interventions. If this patient is having severe pain, is moving around, is trying to not keep the in position, uh, ICD insertion itself can cause complications, right? It can uh, penetrate lung parenchyma, it can cause bronchopleural fistulas. If it is on the left side, there is an injury to, it can be an injury to heart, isn't it? So, positioning of the patient is very important. So, if you get a patient who is not cooperative, then procedure sedation can be planned, especially in emergency situations. Like this is a planned procedure, as you told, you can give IEM opioid, wait for 30, 40 minutes or one hour and do. But if you wait for one hour and do ICD insertion, there is no emergency in it. It's not like, it's not an emergency procedure, I'm saying you have time. Sir, but in the case if you are suspecting any head injury, then if you go with procedure sedation, then GCS scoring? GCS scoring will be a problematic. But then you have to think why we are going for ABCD 
this thing because if you are having a tension pneumothorax or a pneumothorax that has a potential for tension pneumothorax what will kill the patient first that's why we go for ABCD, right? So you need to secure B. For that, you need a ICD. If not, you won't reach D. Isn't it? Secondly, if this patient is having brain injury, you have put an ICD, you have sedated the patient, this patient has brain injury, your GCS monitoring is going to be affected. But if this has a brain injury, you will definitely ask for a CT brain plane, right? <coughs> So, unless the patient is having a completely normal uh, GCS without head injury, definitely you will ask for a CT brain plane. And CT brain plane will tell you whether the patient have a structural defect, that is at least a contusion. Even if there is a contusion, there is a brain injury, TBA, traumatic brain injury, isn't it? So, if traumatic brain injury is there, then GCS monitoring is required or else it is not required. If TBA is required also, the drugs that we give is ultra short acting. When you give ketamine, we are not sedating the patient for a intubation or not giving the ketamine in double the dose. We are going to give the ketamine in a suboptimal dose to give analgesia and some amount of sedative effect. Yes, it is a bit of sedation, but the duration of ketamine is going to be tapered off. Or else we can use multiple drugs in a suboptimal dose to control the level of sedation for the patient. We don't have to completely sedate the patient out, right? So we can, I think, procedure sedation is a good way to manage in acute emergencies, not like this kind of patient. Here you have taken, you don't want procedure sedation. You can explain to the patient, you can give analgesis, prepare and do. But in an acute emergency, uh, you have to do. So next coming to the position of the patient, mm. here the patient will be asked to lie on the side, one side of the bed with the arm behind the head and slightly rotate it so that the axillary space can we can, uh, uh, we can operate on it. Mm. The other way we can ask him to sit on the upright leaning on a table. Anyway, we can do and here we have to see in the, the safe triangle which is the border of the uh, this. Uh, fifth border, fifth rib, upper border of the fifth rib and yes. the posterior, uh, anterior border of the latissimus dorsi and the lateral border of the pectoralis major. Mm -hmm. This forms the triangle. In this triangle, our aim would be to put the ICD. Apex is at the axilla. Apex is at the axilla. Yes. Next, uh, after that, we need to even confirm the site of the drain insertion. No? Okay. Uh, so, uh, this, uh, while well, we are giving the, at the time of the anesthesia itself, we need to just aspirate and see whether we are in the site or not. If you are getting the air, that itself is a good indicator. But at that time, if you are not able to confirm it, we have to take the help of imaging, like using an ultrasound probe or anything to check if are we Correct. The correct angle. Now, in which type of patient will the current thing that he told, no? We have to make sure that drain site is in the same place that we have selected. Which type of patients will you uh, encounter that problem? Loculated effusion. Mm. Loculated effusion is a, a possibility. Um, where else? What he told was when you are giving local anesthesia itself, aspirate and see whether air is coming. If air is coming, you are in space. If not, you have to use imaging technique. One is loculation, correct. Uh, but loculated uh, effusions or pneumothoraces rarely make such a lung collapses, right? It causes segmental lung collapses, isn't it? The what kind of patients will you find Thick difficult circles. to aspirate air? Thick aspirate air. Fat patients. Fat. Okay. Patients who is having obesity, a lot of fatty tissues in there, your lignocaine you are going to give in a um, 20 gauge, uh, 22 gauge candler, right? It may not uh, be deep enough to enter the pleurotic cavity. In such a case, uh, case, you need to make sure that the length of the candler is adequate enough, needle is adequate enough to penetrate. You can use spinal, spinal needles. Fine. Then uh, regarding the drain insertion site, our drain insertion site would be in the safety triangle in the mid axillary line we have to target. But if there is, a, in, in the case of uh, effusions and such, if we wanted to put a drain for, like if it is a chronic uh, chemo uh, cancer patient, we can put in the posterior space so that there will be continuous drainage possible. 
regarding the drain size uh, we use a small bore drain sizes if it is a pneumothorax and large bore drain sizes if it is a pleural fluid especially proteinaceous or blood mm -hmm. blood and proteinaceous tend to solidify and form sediments and get tube block so it's better to go for a bigger diameter mm -hmm. since in pneumothorax we are expecting they have to freely pass you don't have to go for a higher mm -hmm. diameter tube usually it's advised 9 french catheter for the pneumothorax and 10 to 14 for uh, pleural effusions yes Next, regarding the aseptic technique, as in the any procedure, we need to sterile the area, drape Correct. it and clean the area before putting it. And regarding the anesthesia, lignocaine, 3 mg per kg is the choice. And uh, uh, regarding the anesthesia of the choice, uh, a direct uh, one set, uh, we can put at the same level, at the different levels we need to give the anesthesia, not just at a single skin level, because we will be dissecting and going with the skin then the subcutaneous tissue and the muscle and the pleura mm. entire depth should be anesthetized anesthesia should be given through the entire depth of the <laughs> tissue, tissue and at least two rib spaces because even if you go to a rib space and you are not able to enter in it you should be able to enter the next one so at least two rib spaces and the entire depth should be given okay and at the same time it was should be given rather than dissecting and Ah, there is no point in uh, dissecting each layer and giving lignocaine. It's better to uh, anesthetize the entire area altogether, wait for the anesthesia to um, occur, that is 3 to 5 minutes, and do the procedure. There is no point in waiting each layer and anesthetizing each layer. That's just wastage of time. Next, regarding the insertion of the chest tube, if it is a smaller uh, tube sizes, 8 to 10 French tubes, uh, the advice is to uh, go along with the trocar rather than blunt dissection. Well, as, because it is a small size tube, it will pass. It's not about the small size tube. Mm -hmm. If you remove the trocar, the tube itself will become very... Mm -hmm. It doesn't have a tone, like it's not tone, but you get it. No? That's not visibility. Yeah, stiffness. Mm -hmm. So, so the tube doesn't have stiffness. It's very narrow mm -hmm. tube, so it is very uh, non-stiff. Mm -hmm. So you may not be able to introduce it into the uh, puncture hole you have made. It may get bent there. Because of that, trocar will give a bit stiffness to the tube and itself. When you take a bigger diameter tube, it has much more. Mm. stiffness so it will make sure that it won't bend mm. so first uh, regarding the blunt dissection first we give the incision at the skin level uh, we uh, give it at the size of this incision equal to the size of the tube or the size of the finger to pass through it whichever we are using it to do the blunt dissection once we give the we should give slightly bigger than the size of the tube or the finger then we need to uh, palpate each structure as we go on give a dissection and uh, clear the space so that uh, we don't palpate that rib space yes. and dissect towards the rib space yes. so that if uh, the whole idea is that we don't uh, by chance uh, damage any other organ or any other tissue there rather than the only required things so if you feel any pal uh, during palpation with the finger if you feel any other space you need to wait and inspect that rather than dissect into it uh, uh, regarding after the dissection we introduced with the help of the trocar the tube once the tube is in uh, the lung space in the pleural space sorry, in the pleural space we remove the trocar and uh, we need to place the tip of the uh, tube depending upon the condition if it is a pneumothorax we face it towards the epical end or if it is the effusion we place the uh, tip of it to the basal uh, irrespective of the fact that the tube wherever it is placed the drainage happens so further Position of the tube, we no need to replace the trocar and everything after the x-ray taken. Next, uh, regarding the securing the drain. In the, uh, we never uh, encourage to do a pers type of a suture, pers suturing. We initially, uh, the, uh, where the insertion of the tube is there, we have a uh, this um, tie tied ready for that after the tube is removed to close the suture. Apart from that, we uh, cross the tube we tie it to the skin. Simple sutures. Simple in sutures. The simple sutures is used to keep the wound in place and one stage sutures will be put to anchor the tube. tube. No need to fix uh, like multiple ties to no need to be used to tie it across the tube otherwise the tube itself might get blocked. Blocked. And we, we can keep the tube in place by using adhesives now. We have the 
uh, and um, removable adhesives no that is better to keep the tube in place rather than um, tying the tube with the multiple suture materials and you also this large amounts of taper adhesive is uh, now not recommended because it restricts the chest movement and it increases the moisture collection and the increased chances yes. of infection, infection. There. next regarding the management of the drain uh, one thing that we missed when you insert the tube how far into the pleural cavity will you insert the tube Till what is the depth you will go depth initially we, till the giving away so icd tubes have three uh, openings so three openings is given at from the tip of the icd there will be three openings on uh, different areas of the tube mm -hmm. so three openings should be clearly inside the pleural cavity if one of the uh, opening is outside the pleural cavity with the patient will develop no, no. subcutaneous so emphysema because air passing through the uh, tube uh, coming out from the pleural cavity will come through the hole and spread along the subcutaneous space so patient will have a significant discomfort it won't complicate the patient but discomfort will be there so make sure all three um, holes of the tube yeah, uh, drainage holes yeah. are inside the pleural cavity very clearly and at least 2 to 3 centimeters extra so that when tube is moving it will not slip outside. Usual fixing position is 12 to 14 centimeters from chest bar but that is very arbitrary. It's better because each patient has <coughs> different body types. It is better to understand how much depth is there from skin level till rib space and add that space to, from the last hole down. That is the best method because that is the total length of the tube which is going into the body cavity. Next, uh, when we put place the trochaire and we remove the trochaire, we connect it to the drainage system. Underwater, Underwater seal. seal. That should be clearly mentioned. It's not a simple drainage system. There are many instances people are transported without an underwater seal. That underwater seal is very important. It prevents air from going inside. And regarding the clamping of this tube, mm. if there is any bubbling chest tube, we should never clamp it because there is a chance that we are not allowing the pneumothorax out and it may develop into tension pneumothorax. Yes. It should be, before clamping, we should check if there is any bubbling, then only we should clamp. No bubbling, then only we can clamp. If it is the fluids, then uh, approximately 800 ml of fluid can be drained. After that, it requires clamping. Otherwise, re-expansion, pulmonary edema, side effect. It's a possibility. possibility. And uh, we should use a single flow drainage system that is underwater seal for the drainage system. And uh, suction, if there is a requirement of suction, high volume, low pressure suction only is allowed. For what is a condition in which you may have to give suction? Thick secretions is the example. Lung abscess, empyema, mm -hmm. these are conditions in which you might have to give a very very low amount of suction pressure to keep the flow of um, products mm -hmm. uh, you have to make sure it's a high volume low pressure uh, suction because intrapleural space has a predisposed pressure difference you have to make sure your suction pressure doesn't exceed that mm -hmm. Apart from that, I, uh, we, require, we require a x-ray post the procedure to confirm that the tip and the tube is in, in the pleural space and there is no any damage to the lung causing the lung expansion problems. Apart from that, uh, after the tube is inserted and when we are removing the tube, the timing of the removal of the tube is necessary. Here we need to like, uh, where patient was asked to do Valsalva well maneuver when we are pulling out the tube or the patient should be in the expiration space, expiration phase, then only we should take the tube, not in the inspiration. Okay. Those are the guidelines. Steps the in which in, you will insert ICD. If at all, unfortunately, when you insert ICD, you are getting blood. Then the actually is there is this hemothorax patient. Internal memory artery is one of the things which we should take care. It is in this uh, space of where it can come in our field. Not during dissection. I am saying about you are inserting ICD. It's not a hemothorax patient. Okay. You insert an ICD into the pleural cavity. Blood started coming out. At that time? Yes. At that time. At that time. What will you do? It's a hemothorax. <laughs> it's 
not a hematoids you are not suspecting uh, trauma we think that it's a ca breast pain case with the lung metastasis and suspected uh, effusion you inserted you are getting blood what will you do will you remove the icd no you, don't. you should not remove the icd clamp the icd go for definitive imaging make sure you haven't inserted into a tissue but do not remove the icd it will take away the pressure of it okay okay so icd insertion right yes. so anyhow we have icd insertion mainly in pneumothorax can you briefly tell us what is the classification of pneumothorax classification of pneumothorax is basically a spontaneous pneumothorax primary pneumothorax or the secondary pneumothorax primary pneumothorax is defined as the condition where there is no underlying lung pathology correct but coming to the specifics of it there can be subpleural blebs which might be causative of the primary pneumothorax so after if you do a better imaging ct and finding this previously undiagnosed lung conditions yes. right yes. Yes. on what is one of the commonest population in which you can have primary spontaneous pneumothorax in connective tissue disorders like uh, marfan syndrome marfan syndrome marfans are very common to have small usually mm-hmm. it won't uh, progress at all it will be simple pneumothorax it will get resolved by itself itself but they can develop spontaneous pneumothorax connective tissue disorders mm-hmm. okay and even uh, cig- uh, drug users like smoking cigarettes and <laughs> if the patient is uh, diving subcuba diving these cases also primary spontaneous pneumothorax can be possible okay Coming secondary has second- a huge list well, anything and everything can cause pneumothorax okay, okay. Uh, fine and uh, secondary there are instances in which traumatic pneumothorax is put inside secondary pneumothorax mm-hmm. because it's caused by trauma but there are instances in which tension pneumothorax alone is kept as a different segment mm-hmm. because Uh, main reason for tension pneumothorax to be kept as a seg- different segment is not because of pathology mm-hmm. it's because of management because primary secondary uh, spontaneous pneumothorax is everything indirectly what we are telling is the patient has time for evaluation there's no emergency tension pneumothorax is put in a different segment only because there is no evaluation we need to put a icd promptly and then only evaluate yeah, the patient yeah. to identify and classify what type of pneumothorax it is mm. okay mm. okay mm. clinical ex- mm. no that is for open pneumothorax what you are saying about is open pneumothorax there is a external injury in the chest wall with the communication towards the no, pleural no, cavity no. causing the patient to uh, air jet being continuously pulled out then you have to put a three way uh, seal to make sure that there is a flap which closes on expiration uh, which go- closes on inspiration and opens on expiration that is a open pneumothorax okay this is tension pneumothorax okay and the guys uh, in this case furtherly this patient on uh, putting the icd the lung has expanded in its volume and post which uh, the patient has been treated with uh, prophylactic antibiotics and nebulization and uh, repeat hrct showed the medial lobe of the lung is collapsed and trachea shifted to the opposite side because of this collapse so uh, for further evaluation the patient has been discharged from the emergency and is taken up by the pulmonology department to find out what is cause for middle lobe uh, collapse. collapse but uh, screening wise there is no any culture positive or the, any the fluid no fluid anything that no infective under parameter evaluation. infective parameters is there but uh, under evaluation for a middle lobe middle collapse lobe. in that condition what will be the second option to go for for investigation but mm-hmm. second investigation do you have a um, low middle lobe of the right lung is collapsed bronchoscopy yeah, to see bronchoscopy to look for intraluminal uh, obstruction mm-hmm. right and uh, if bronchoscopy is not there then only we go for astra imaging isn't it yes. fine okay, okay.